What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Podium Picks. Sean Woodland and Tommy Marquez inside the wonderful Working Against Gravity studios here on today's episode. Tommy, I mean, we just have the CrossFit Games, so we got to talk about the CrossFit mm -hmm. Games, right? We're doing our Podium Picks for the best moments from the 2020 Reebok CrossFit Games. And there were a lot to choose from. This was not easy. Whew. I mean, it's fun. It's funny because I there's, there's so many moments happen throughout uh, the course of a normal mm -hmm. CrossFit Games. You have 40 athletes in the years past. Last year, take your pick. <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> we had between 160 and 10. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was it was everywhere in between. Uh, we really explored the space, uh, but <laughs> I, it's funny. I feel like this year lent itself to some mem to me some memories that were very very clear in my mind. Yes, uh, because agreed. because some of the distraction and other things were out, less clutter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I don't want to call it clutter because right. obviously there are people's performances. Sure. But yeah, no, I get what you mean for sure. So uh, uh, there's there are some that I'm like, oh yeah, this is, and there's some I'm excited to see how they age throughout time yeah. as as they kind of cement themselves in CrossFit mm -hmm. lore. Okay, well before we get into that. Uh, we want to tell you about our presenting sponsor here, Working Against Gravity. And as we have talked about uh, earlier in the week, we are entering a time frame now where there are quite a few nutrition landmines awaiting you, whether mm -hmm. it be Halloween tomorrow, whether it be Oof. Thanksgiving coming up in a few weeks, the holiday season, and New Year's. So there are a lot of reasons why you want to armor up as you prepare to navigate your way through that that minefield. Yeah, and what the... The one of the best ways we've found to armor up is by making sure you have someone uh, to help you along the way in your nutrition path and as well as help create some sustainable life habits that will create accountability and responsibility in how you approach nutrition on a daily basis. And that's what WAG can do for you. Their online nutrition coaching, we have told you a ton about whether you're an athlete and you want to sign up for their performance program for one-on-one -on -one nutrition coaching, or if you're just like me and you're trying to get a little bit more fit each day and have a little bit better, broader understanding for nutrition in the event that one day maybe you have to pass it down to some kids or something like that. That's what their lifestyle brand is. And on top of that, on top of the coaching we've talked about, they have a ton of resources that are basically free for you to be able to utilize whenever you want. If you go to workingagainstgravity.com, you click articles in the upper left-hand section, you get a ton of stuff. They have recipes, like a five-minute egg sandwich, wild mushroom farro, um, coaching resources, how to find a fulfilling career, all sorts of stuff you can explore by topic, recipes, muscle gain and performance, weight loss, lifestyle and mindset, coaching resources, tracking tutorials, member stories, all of that in their article section for free. Um, it's just another one of the many services that they provide. And trust me, if they're that thorough with the education piece, they're more than thorough enough uh, to guide you through on your nutrition journey. If you go to workingagainstgravity.com, use the code ELITE50, you get 50 bucks off your first month. That first month will carry you at least through, what do we, yeah, at least through Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. So um, trust me, it's a deal you're going to want to take full advantage of before we get all the way into uh, Christmas cookies, which yeah. is, ooh. Ooh. yeah, so. Can't wait. Okay, uh, I'm going to make some gains, if you know what I mean, during this holiday season. I plan on eating quite a bit of food, mm -hmm. um, and I'm lucky to do so. So yeah, I don't want to. <laughs> Don't want to forget to say that because yep. the holidays are a great, great time. Oh, and I think we they are well needed this year. Yes. Um, all right, let's talk about the games and let's talk about what happened and some of our favorite moments. And we're going to start with our spirit of the games and our dark horse. I believe I am going. I'm going first. Am I going first? Sure. All right, I'll go first. Uh, okay, so I'm going to kick off and I'm going to start with the with the spirit of the games. And this is one I think I'm glad you brought this up because this is one that I want to see how it's going to age with time because I'm not sure we're ever going to see something like this again. Now, the reason why I don't have this higher is because it did not elicit a big, you know, instantaneous emotional response. Mm -hmm. It was really cool to watch. It was something special to see, but it wasn't like, whoa, you know, mind blowing moment. It's when Matt and Tia were able to cross the finish line mm. together in Atlanta. I thought that was. You know, super cool because you had two champions, one who was continuing to cement her legacy as the greatest of all time, the other in Matt who was you know, rewriting history, winning his fifth straight. Training partners, they just, they did the entire event together on the same pace. Matt still won even though he looked like he kind of throttled back. And they were able to cross the finish line together hand in hand in the final event. And that's something we have never seen before at the games. And I'm mm -hmm. not sure we're ever going to see it again. Like that was a moment that is funny because we talked about it uh, in our production meeting that, that morning about whether or not we thought that would happen. 
And I have to give our director, Mike Roth, credit. He goes, I guarantee you they're going to do that because somebody out there is telling them, you know, that photo of you two crossing the finish line is going to be worth a lot of money. Oh, <laughs> so I didn't even I, think I about went, that. That is a, that's a good argument, and I have no response for that. So I, I think, you know, I wasn't prepared. I, I was still preparing for the, the fact that Matt wanted, might push the pace a little bit and decide to cross the finish line on, on his own. But I thought it was just a, it was a cool way to end a very unique and very special CrossFit Games. And I, I think as we get further away from that, we'll look back on it as it'll get more special with time. Because we're not, again, we're not going to see it again. So that's my spirit of the games, Matt and Tia in Atlanta. Now, my dark horse, I, I took some time thinking about this. And, you know, in the spirit of dark, in the dark horse, it's not something that was that big. But at the time, it was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. It had nothing to do with the athletes. Mine is the fans who showed up at the bike repeater. Ah. It provided a cool little environment uh, because for the most part, we had nothing but silence when we were watching events. You had no crowd reaction. And before the event started, Dave Castro actually went down to the fence at the Morgan Hill Outdoor Sports Complex where some of the fans were gathered. And there were probably, I don't know, 20 to 30 at that point. Um, there were more the final day. And he gave them these little cowbells and, hung, and, and handed them out. And, they, and uh, Saxon Panchik and Daniel Brandon and I think Chandler and uh, some of the, the demo team essentially went out there and handed out some swag. And Dave gave them some cowbells that he said, look, when they get to this end, you're going to want to ring them. You know, so as they, you know, kind of encourage them. And you could hear it on the broadcast. And it was just a nice little change that saved us from the, just the dead silence. Now, the silence was cool because we got to hear stuff that we usually don't hear. Like if you go back to 2007 Reloaded, you could hear them breathing. You could hear the barbell when it hit their shoulders. Like yeah. that was really cool to hear, the, <laughs> hear them exhale. Like that's usually something that we don't get to experience. So I loved that. But I just thought it was cool that we finally had a little bit of crowd noise. Uh, it added a little extra um, element of excitement to that event, especially then at the end when Adler and, and Matt Fraser were racing and, and people got kind of charged up about it. So I give the fans at the bike repeater, those people who came out and said, you know what, I'm going to have not a very good seat, but I'm going to stand at this fence. I'm going to check things out through the, the chain link, and I'm going to make the best of a not ideal situation. And it really worked out. Man, I feel bad for not including that in mind because I literally drove to Morgan <laughs> yeah. Hill to do a little piece on that. Uh, but that was a phenomenal. I'm, that's going to go on the honorable mention. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the shot, and I'll, I told Rothy, I gave him credit, the shot of them when they were, um, as they were riding away for the first time, he had a low angle yes. like from the EMG that, and you could see like, you could see the heat rising mm -hmm. off of the the turf and you, or the grass. You could see them riding away, and then the all the fans yeah. in the distance. Beautiful. That rock um, does some good work. Man. Oh, he does. Oh man, ah, oh, that's a good. Okay, um, I feel a little bit bad about not including that in mine in mine now. But my spirit of the games is the surprise on the trail run. Okay, and I and I I I had to choose the surprise itself because it gave us a few different moments from that singular piece that I couldn't just, I couldn't just distill mm -hmm. down to just one moment outside of that. So obviously the big one, Matt crosses the finish line, <laughs> flips, flips uh, Castro the bird. I think he spoke for the greater CrossFit community at least at one point in their career <laughs> when they were told of a particular workout from Mr. Dave Castro on an open announcement or something, and all you really wanted to do was flip him the bird. <laughs> Mine came in 2012 when it was seven minutes of burpees yes. and I was like, are you kidding me, Dave? Um, but yeah, I think, I think that embodied all of us at one point in time when we're just like tired. You know, we realize we have more. Mm -hmm. the coach tells you to get up, keep going. And you're just like, I'm going to say, I'm going to give you the old California hello. <laughs> I'm surprised that's not on a shirt yet. Oh, it's, it's, it's got to be. It's got to gotta gotta be. be. Yeah. Um, but, uh, <laughs> the, but on top of that, it gave us the what I would call the Heisman moment for Katrin's spirit of the games. You know, we talk about in Heisman, uh, anyone that's not familiar in, in college football, the best player in the country is given the Heisman Trophy Award. And typically, it, with throughout the year, you're always looking for the athletes that are in contention to have that one Heisman moment. That one moment that when they get announced and they start playing the highlight reel, the one that just ha gives you that visceral reaction where you're like, yeah, that's when he earned it. And I think that the, 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 
surprise is what gave us that for catch and being able to battle back mm -hmm. and you know kind of get that first event win and and do so in impressive fashion it also in my opinion gave us something that it's not on my list but it i think it it's it could be a dark horse in just by virtue of the fact that Haley adams finishing the weekend in fourth oh yeah after the trail run she went home she was mm -hmm. she i think her body was just like what the heck did you just put me through she couldn't keep fluids down couldn't keep food down didn't sleep at all that first night and came into saturday basically wrecked no food no water mm -hmm. no sleep most people that would be it and that set the stage for her to continue to battle even through the the hands in atlanta when she basically you know mm -hmm. took a, a fruit peeler to her hands <laughs> it was yeah, I, and, and all of that came from that surprise moment in doubling the run, whereas yeah. I don't think she would have quite had that same reaction to battle back from without that surprise. And then, of course, my, one of my favorite moments, and I really want to see uh, it made into a meme, is there's a shot of Adler coming down the hill, and he sees Fraser and Madero's coming back up, and he's like, wait, are they running to like bring me in or something? And then he's like, oh, wait, they're just running. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I feel like that should be a ver like a meme of like, like w when you wake up and see the, the, the number at the bottom of your bar tab from the night before, yeah. like that. <laughs> I've made a terrible mistake. <laughs> that, that's, yeah, that's the meme. So um, that's my spirit of the game. Okay, that's a, dark, a good one. My dark horse is Medeiros and Fraser on the handstand walk. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Oh, man. And so to me, this is, this is one of the moments where I was like, that is why Madero's has it. Yes. Right? He makes a mistake in the corn sack sprint by not sprinting to the line, gets, gets towed out at the line by, by Adler, loses 20 points there, barely misses a couple of lifts, maybe doesn't quite have the, after having a, a, a slight poundage lead in the, the total, get, ends up taking fifth in the total with a couple of missed lifts that could have swung it here or there. Maybe gone, you know, smaller jumps in the deadlift. Instead of just backing down, his, him and his coach dialed in a strategy that was going to allow him to be successful. And we got to see it juxtaposed with the strategy for Fraser, mm -hmm. which is two athletes in two very different places. You yeah. know, Fraser, peak of his game, confident, doesn't have to worry about breaks, tucks his chin, keeps his eyes on his, like, in, eyes on the line between his hands, just like perfect handstand form, and just motors 90 yards unbroken. Medeiros is scrapping. He's fighting. I've just given up a ton of points. I got to find a way to maximize my potential on something and make sure I have even a shot of competing with Matt here in this. And you got to see those side by side. And normally a juxtaposition has very different results, but I would say they're almost not because they were both very successful in that. And there's just a difference in where Matt mm -hmm. is in, as an athlete and where Justin is. And that was something that I was like, this is brilliant the way he's oh, doing yeah. it. And that's that's the 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 nuance of competition that is the strategy and mindset mm -hmm. of an athlete to keep coming forward after a mistake and for a young athlete that's exactly what you want to see oh, i forgot about that one man that was that's a really good one that's that, a really good one that one made me sit up out of my chair yeah well and then also you, you mentioned the juxtaposition noah olson was another guy who was trying to go unbroken and mm -hmm. you know and, and medeiros got past him I, not going to shock me if maybe you see that strategy employed more often moving forward as we see handstand walk events yeah, yeah it was that's a good, oh man, I, for, I totally forgot about that. Um, one thing I'm not going to forget about, so this is before, now before we get into our podium, so spots three, two, and one, mm -hmm. we're going to get into our whoop podium for the week. Mm -hmm. So this week, we're going to take a look at our leaders for your average recovery for the month. So we are recording this on October 30th, so we have one day left to go, Halloween here in the month, so we want to look at the people who have the best average recovery for the month. Oh, yeah. And they done recovered well, Sean. <laughs> All right. So for our Talking Elite Fitness group, uh, the top 10 recovery for the month. First off, a shout out to Jamie Lesk, the number one overall person for as far as recovery. An average for the month of 96%. Wow. Dang. <laughs> Teach us your ways, Jamie. Shoot us a DM. Let us know mm -hmm. what you do. We'll share it with the rest of the crew. Number two, Sarah Arnett, 90%. Number three, Daniel Sulzinger, 85%. Number four, Justin Kelly, 83%. Number five, Nicole Bynum, we have said her name before, 
Number six, Katie Luznia, 78%. Number seven, Zach Erickson, 78%. Number eight, Brandon Hosga, 77%. Number nine, Boris Kanu. That sounds like an awesome <laughs> name. Or maybe it's Kanu, but either way, Boris Kanu, 77%. And number 10, Paul Hawkins, 76% for the month. Congratulations to everyone that, that crushed it this month. You deserve it. You earned yourself maybe a little bit of candy or, uh, I don't know, something at, to celebrate your recovery. That is amazing. Whew. I was at 63% for the month. That is not bad. I need to, <laughs> we need to talk to that. What was the name of the person who finished number one again? Jamie Lesk. Yeah, she needs to get a hold of us and tell us what's going on because there's some, clearly some good habits that are being employed there. Resting heart rate, 44. Whoa. HRV, 157. <laughs> Dang. All right. That is impressive. So congratulations to the, our top 10 uh, athletes in our uh, WHOOP podium, average recovery for the month. Remember, guys, if you're not on the WHOOP train, you can go to WHOOP.com. You can check out all the information. If you decide to join, use the code TALKING15. Uh, you'll save 15% and you will optimize the way you train and recover. Let's get into the podium. All right, we're now into spots three, two, and one here for our games moment. moment. So I'm going to start uh, with my third place, my bronze medalist. And this one is more of, this is going to, I'm, I'm going to lump really two events into this. So I'm going to, uh, my third place, I'm calling Sam's Sunday. So Ooh. Sam Quant on Sunday, who <laughs> I, I was talking to, I believe that there's a group of athletes now who are in what I call the League of Shadows. <laughs> and it's <laughs> Bjorkman Gumanson, <laughs> Val Voberl, uh, Chris, Sam Quant, Kristen Holta. and Kristen Holta, because they just hide in the shadows, they just do their thing, and then bam, second the place the on the The shadowy podium. cabal. They're that just out there. You don't notice them. And Sam Quant had been this guy who was like, oh, yeah, great. He's doing a good job. And he's kind of all over the leaderboard and, you know, not doing anything too spectacular. But he Sunday morning swimming stuff wins that. And then, of course, had the, one of the greatest candid moments that we've seen in CrossFit Games history where we're talking about him. The camera is on him and he rips this huge belch. Oh, Just phenomenal. lets it fly. That, was, that provided everybody with a good laugh. Uh, and then follows that up with sprint sled sprint providing us with one of the best races that we've seen all weekend. Uh, he was not supposed to be the guy who at least hung with Fraser on that sprint. I didn't think, I mean, I thought he would have no problem with the sled given his size. He can push that thing. But the fact that he hung with Matt on the sprint and had you given him maybe another 10 to 15 yards, maybe mm. Sam wins that. But he ended up losing by 0.4 seconds on that second event. And then all of a sudden, he's in second place overall going into the final event with a pretty large cushion. Mm -hmm. And if I'm just, it's just, it just happens every year. And I go back to, and I actually talk to Tia about this. Every time I see Tia, I always apologize for 2015 because when you go back to our post shows that we did for ESPN, we had nothing to Tia because we just didn't, we didn't know who she was and she was just kind of hanging around and bam, second place. You know, Kristen Holta, uh, Bjorgvin, that I think it was 2015 was the same year. Mm -hmm. We like these people, we just look at the leaderboard we're like, oh, well, that's not going to last. That's, uh, that's adorable, but you're not going to, and then it, he just hangs on, hangs around and bam. Um, and it happened again with Sam Quant. He was, you know, we even in our picks picked him probably to finish fifth. I think we both picked him fifth. I know I did. Uh, I may have had him fourth. I but, think I picked uh, yeah. him fifth. But second place overall, of course, he didn't, you know, didn't do very well in the last event, but he didn't need to. Mm -hmm. So that Sunday was super exciting for Sam Quant to, you know, first of all, like win an event. And I know that Jeff Adler beat Matt Fraser in the total. I get that. And, I'm, you know, and someone mentioned, you've got to stop saying he should have won. Fraser should have won. Well, no, Fraser should have won that. He didn't, but he should have won the total. He had mm -hmm. a math error. Yeah. Didn't win, so we're not going to give him credit for it. Yep. But I feel like Quant was the first guy that, like, legit beat Fraser because, you know, no mistakes. They both ran their best races and Quant won. And he almost pulled it off again uh, in the second event of the day in sprint, uh, sprint, sled, sprint. So Sam Quant's Sunday, that gets third place for me. When you said Sam's Sunday, I was like, is that what people call grocery shopping in bulk in the South? Like, <laughs> we're going to Sam's Club. We're going to have ourselves that's, a Sam Sunday. <laughs> that's actually, I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> I don't know. That was like immediately where my head went. I was like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, Sam Quant. Of course, yeah, that guy. See, yeah. League, League of Shadows. Of Shadows. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's phenomenal. Um, my third place is Matt passing Adler on the bike repeater. Ooh, that was a good one. There, that was awesome. There is something awesome about watching the best in the sport just drop the hammer, mm -hmm. and we got to see that during 
the bike repeater kind of almost by accident because Matt and I and I spoke with him afterwards he thought that Adler was around behind him yes so he's biking 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 mm -hmm. he sees Adler coming up on him in round nine he goes up they both tap Adler passes him on the rope climb he says and this is another clue in that just how aware Matt is he looks down at Adler's round sheet and he goes oh, oh. shoot <laughs> <laughs> well hello there um I'm going to be your train conductor today. My name is Matt Fraser. Mm -hmm. Hop on for a little ride real quick. And he just he that, hammered oh, that yeah. bike. That was awesome because it was like, wait a minute. where's? And that's like you said, just dropping the hammer and you see that extra gear it mm -hmm. literally and figuratively is still there. Yeah. And, and you know, this is where we talk about the visual spectacle mm -hmm. of, of events that the bike was long enough for was long enough for people to if they really pushed it to put some distance mm -hmm. there and if they worked the gears correctly and matt was switching gears the whole time and we got to see him you know drop the gear put you know fire off on those legs and he's one of the best with the assault bike he's sneaky good at mm -hmm. powering through that and we got to see him blow it away and it was like i, I mean i posted a meme about it as yes, soon as i saw yes, it i was that like was a good one. i was like that is that is Fast and the Furious, yep. Jesse versus, uh, what is that guy's name? It's not Hong. No idea. But yeah, I, I always see picture of that guy going, Toretto, you embarrass me in front of my family. <laughs> when they do the, the drug raid on, or the raid on him or I whatever. I have seen I, none of those movies. You haven't seen the original Fast and the Furious? No. Oh my, it is so quotable. Oh man, he's like, dude, I almost had you. And he's like, you almost had me? You didn't have your car, and everybody just starts. He starts. They start trash talking, which right. apparently Adler quoted right when he got off. Uh, oh, okay. He, he got off and was like, "I almost had you. Uh, uh, d d didn't have my car." <laughs> <laughs> and and then just a coincidence that that was the move, movie that's, that I thought of. Yeah, so. there you go. But, uh, that's a good one. Yeah. Um, okay, so now we're at second place. Okay. So my second place is one you have already mentioned. My second place is Castro's surprise on uh, the ranch loop, and the reason I picked it is because I. It, it may have been my perspective. We knew it was coming. We found out about it earlier in the day. We knew it was coming. Uh, so there was anticipation that was building up for how this was going to be revealed and what mm -hmm. people were going to say. And in fact, the prior day, we had watched in order to test all the broadcast equipment out there. The demo team went out there and ran it. So it was Saxon Panchik, Danielle Brandon, and uh, Chandler Smith. Now, Saxon Panchik had run it before. So you could tell he was holding back. He knew that he had to do this twice. Whereas Chandler went out hot. Like he goes, I'm going to crush this event. And so Chandler was the first guy across. And we saw Dave tell him. Like, again, they didn't know. Like the, the demo team didn't know. And Saxon didn't tell them. <laughs> told, told, <laughs> told Chandler, run it in reverse. And Chandler just went, hey. Okay, and he just got up and kind of just <laughs> stumbled uh, and, and you know, uh, his way up the hill. Um, and then Saxon came in and turned around. And then I remember Danielle Brandon came in. And she's like, I thought they were coming back to cheer me on. <laughs> and they made me run it again. So we got to see that play out. So I was really anticipating what it would look like in real life. And I just thought it was super cool because the only thing, and you'll, you'll probably, you'll, I'm sure you'll remember something that I don't. But the only thing I can think of that was, somewhat like that recently was 2014 when we did thick and quick and double grace mm -hmm. because they didn't know. And then they were, were revealed. You know, they did thick and quick and then they, the final event got revealed right there on the floor. And it was like three, two, one go. Um, so that was the last time that I think we've seen the goalpost kind of move. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think they knew coming out to the floor that they were going to do two events. I think I'm not sure if they did, but they had, I don't think they did. They, they were sequestered. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But, I love the fact that it was, we're going to change this mid-event. We're going to see who has the physical capacity to get re-engaged, but we're also going to see who has the mental fortitude to turn it back on and realize, man, I sold out to get here. This is terrible. I don't want to do this again, but now I got to. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just love the way it played out. I love Matt giving him the finger and Dave going, no, I'm serious. Like You're going to start losing. Go back and run mm -hmm. it again. And it was, it was just a, it was a great moment. Um, and that's another one. I don't know if we're ever going to see that again because I don't know if you can do that with a bigger field. I mean, you could have, and you could have done it in that setting, but I just, the ranch was something, there was something special about that because the yeah. way the terrain is, you know, if you're on a flat surface, like a track or whatever, and you see people turn around, that's, you know, obviously that's going to ruin the surprise. But yep. um, 
yeah, I just thought, I thought it was a really great twist. And like I said, I knew about it going in and we discussed how we could let people know there was something coming and what we were going to say. And, uh, I really wanted to let the cat out of the bag right at the top. Be like, they're going to have to turn around and run it again. This is going to be so awesome. But I couldn't. So yeah. we just had to call the event like it was, but, uh, that, yeah, I, I really enjoyed that moment. So that's my number two Castro surprise. Um, it's funny. They actually did uh, in 2010. So 2010, okay. they sequestered the athletes. They came out to the floor. That's right. They actually didn't even tell them what the first workout was until like right before. So they brought them out and said, your, fir your, like, your first workout is this, this, this. Three, two, one, go. That, and, and they had to go right then and there. Correct me if I'm wrong. That's the one where Rich couldn't climb the rope. Right? Yes, there's, the, okay. there's three right. parts. There was a, I think it was like 25 push-ups yeah. and like climb over the wall. Yeah. Then there was a toes to bar. Maybe it was a toes to bar power clean or snatch or something like that. And then the, the burpee wall mm -hmm. overs and rope climbs. But this was the first time that an event, like the rules change in the middle of an event. I would say the rules changed, yeah. They, but they each time they got done, they're like, "Oh yeah, you have another okay, one," right. and you had to move forward. Okay. And it was like, "Oh, I didn't." Gotcha. Okay, okay, you have another one type right. thing, yeah. Um, but yeah, it was. Whew. I mean, I, it was funny because someone someone was like, when I was chatting with some people, they're like, "Man, like they're going to come in way under the time cap," and I'm like, "This can't be it. There has to be something before, before like." We were talking before. I'm like, there's a 90 minute competition window, and it's going to take them 30 ish minutes. Yeah. Mm -mm. Not out. I've seen. I've seen <laughs> this. Not nah, player. Um, yeah. So my my second place. It's funny. We swapped spirit of the games and right. second place finishers. Uh, so my second is Matt and Tia finishing the weekend together, mm -hmm. and this was really solidified for me the next day when I interviewed Matt. I think the the interview is coming out yeah, in a couple hours. And talking with him about that moment, even before off camera, and there's something about Fraser and Tia that, that I think they're very much kindred spirits in this, that regard. And you, you remember Tia talking, it, it, Tia made a, a heartfelt post basically calling Matt the brother that yeah. she never had. And I think they're very much alike in many ways. They're fiercely competitive. They're also fiercely loyal. And they, they are loyal in a sense that they don't outwardly trust a lot of people, but once you're in the group, you're you're like you're like family right and they keep a very close very tight circle and they don't venture out too often you know they obviously they're social they're champions of the faces of the sport they do you know they do things mm -hmm. and they engage and interact but they're very much like hey if we had it our way it's just us against the world training every day putting in the work together and i think i could see it in matt's face when we talked about it that like it was important to him because they're both the minute they cross the finish line they're making they're reinventing history they're, yes. they're rewriting the history books. And all season long, they have worked and pushed each other. And what they accomplished is in large part, is in some shape or form attributed to the other person's hard work as well. Because they're partners in this, like true mm -hmm. partners in training um, and, and trying to push each other to, to excel. And so when they had the opportunity to line up side by side on the competition floor, it was almost a no-brainer for them. It was... You know, like this is this is the person that has that has literally poured out the blood, sweat, and tears every day on the competition floor with me, or in the training floor. Mm -hmm. Now we get to do it on the competition floor. There's no person that I would rather share this moment with like, on the competition floor than the other person yeah. that's done it. And so it just seemed like one of those moments where, like, they didn't do it for themselves. They didn't do it for the competition, the sport. They did it for the other person. Yeah. It was. It was selfless, but in a very specific way, unlike we've ever mm -hmm. seen it. And I think it was also a dedication and a tribute to those who had supported them. And it was fitting then that they got to cross the finish line and share history in the same moment mm -hmm. with that, with the one person that has basically matched them effort for effort along yeah. the way. No, I, I couldn't agree more with that. And like I said, I think the far, the further we get away from that, mm -hmm. the more we're going to look back on it. And, and the, the way that we, the, Trying to think of the right word, we're gonna, we're, it's gonna just be viewed with more fondness as we get mm -hmm. further away. And, 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 and Matt still won <laughs> it, exactly, and it's gonna, yeah, he's right, still won the event. And so, which means that Tia passed what four dudes, it, and and yeah, and <laughs> Matt won the event. That means technically Tia was right there with basically every other, every other dude. Just crazy. They passed Noah yeah. on the final run. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's funny. People ask me if they think like I, I never will doubt Tia to me, but I think. 
Carrie was in 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 like kill shot mode. Yeah. That I don't know if Tia really poured it on. If she would have caught, it might have been a race. Yeah. They might have been close. They might have been rep for rep. I, I just don't know. Yeah, but, I agree with you. That's a good segue because my number one is Pierce's effort on Atalanta. That mm-hmm. was the one. It was the one moment we had this weekend that was more or less, other than Sam Quant winning a couple of those the the swim event and then pushing Fraser on the uh, sprint. It was the one truly question we questioned whether or not it was going to happen going in Mm -hmm. because i want to i want to recall this correctly tia or i'm sorry carrie went into that final event in fifth place overall and she had to beat Haley adams by two spots on the overall leaderboard in over in, in order to give herself a chance to get into third and we were talking about it i was talking about with chase and bill before we started the broadcast and our biggest question was is Carrie Pierce, while this is a good event for her, is she going to want to work as hard as she's going to need to work in order to get herself into third place? Mm. And that was a big question. And that I knew that she would be okay on, on everything in the middle. It was the runs at the beginning and the end where I, was, I don't know how she's going to handle it. But I knew you know, she can do handstand push-ups until the cows come home. She can, the pistols aren't a problem. And the pull-ups, she demolished those. But the moment I'll always remember is her hopping off the pull-up bar, just sucking wind and stomping the gas, being like, I have no reason to leave anything in the tank whatsoever. I am selling out, and I'm going to win this. And the fact that she was, you know, she had the wherewithal, too, to be looking behind her to see where uh, Katrin was and just said, I'm not slowing down. You know, mm-hmm. she had every excuse at that moment to maybe walk it off a little bit and just catch her breath before she took off on the run, but she didn't. She put the hammer down. She kept everybody, everybody behind her, and she came across and won the event. And it, it is one of the, you know, I, I go back to 2019 when what she did in Mary. Mm-hmm. That was an incredible oh, yeah, because she beat everybody. And I think in this case, she beat everybody again, right? Yeah, she beat everybody. Yeah. Um, so unbelievable to do that for two straight years. Now, granted, the movements were more or less the same. You just added a mile run on both sides and a little more weight, but... I was so impressed with what she she was able to do on that event and solidified, we talked about this the other day, the fact that right now, and even you know, maybe ever, she's making a case for the best American female CrossFitter. Yeah. And it, she really put an exclamation point on it in that event. I was, it was, I couldn't have been more impressed. Yeah, it's, it's uh, I'm just going to piggyback off it because that's my top yeah. moment too. The, I remember coming into the, I was watching the lead up to it and, um, people are like, who's your pick? Who's your pick? Who's your pick? I'm like, I, I will die on the shield saying Carrie Pierce because she won Murph the last time it showed up for the women, and she won, uh, she won Mary, and this is basically just the, the, the hate fueled love child of those two <laughs> of those two two workouts, and she needs it most importantly. Mm-hmm. You know, we we talk we used to talk all the time on on the update show and in production meetings and stuff like that like who do you think is going to do well who do you think needs to do well and sometimes the need drives that performance much more than anything Mm -hmm. else and that was that was very poignant in my head like she needs this and she's fully capable of winning this workout and so it's fine i was talking to marston heber afterwards and i'm really excited to see some of the doc stuff because there was a coach off going on at the bottom like Mm -hmm. You coaches were close there. I think that was the only time coaches were allowed at the ranch. I think so. And they were yelling. And apparently, Kotler, Justin Kotler, was just like, this is, this is exactly what we trained for this moment. Mm-hmm. Like, just screaming. I mean, I would have... I mean, I would have found the nearest wall and yeah. ran through it if I had heard that, you know? Like, mm-hmm. he's screaming at her. Like, you have an athlete in the exact moment you've been preparing for basically your entire career. Like, you're in control of your destiny to try and see, snag the thing that's has eluded you during your career so far. And you're you're getting to do it in a setting that's very close and you can see clearly the the competition lines between you and you and everyone else. And you've got your coach there. And you've got your coach in your face. And it's like that is to me that's like, you know, the you know, Carrie Pierce may never win a CrossFit Games championship, but those are like the 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 type of like winners pedigree, winners moments, winners mentality type things that you see. And and then, even more impressively, I believe she both of her miles were between eight oh five and eight ten, so she yeah. ran the same. She ran the second mile 
after all of that work, just as fast as she ran the first mile. And anyone who's done Murph will tell you how, who, anyone who's really done Murph, mm-hmm. how hard that is. Well, and here's a crazy thing then you think about that. So she spent a little more than 16 minutes running. So she did all those movements. She did 600 reps of body weight movements now with a vest mm-hmm. in about 30 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Basically 20 rounds of Mary vested in 30 yeah. minutes. That's insane. Every 90 seconds, round of Mary, round of Mary vested. After all of that weekend, everything you've done yep. and unpartitioned. Mm-hmm. It'd be one thing if it were partitioned. Yes. Unpartitioned. The pull-ups at the end alone, the grip being gone. I, I, like, I've only done over 150 pull-ups once, mm-hmm. I think. Mm. No. What is it? Uh, 30. What's 30 rounds of? Ugh, maybe not. What's 30? Yeah. I, I've done 40 rounds of Cindy before Oof. in a day or in, in a workout, and that's 200 pull-ups. That ba- mm-hmm. like Once you hit like what your training cap is, or once you get to that back half when the skin starts to roll up on your hands mm-hmm. and you lose the sh- – like, you lose the small muscles in your shoulders, no, right? That's exactly. And, and you, lo- you, you lose that shoulder girdle stability to keep yourself in the pocket mm-hmm. of, a, a, of a, a butterfly pull up. Right. And, you, and uh, you know, PTs and people refer to it as like the clunking of the shoulder mm-hmm. coming out, or, you know, people feel it when they do butterflies for the first time with, with, uh, with a vest. But just how hard it makes that back 150. Of pull-ups oh, is like, I can't even imagine. Just imagine doing 150 pull-ups in sets of three and five oh, with a vest. No. After as the last thing you have to do across 12 events uh, in a three-day weekend, where you've had at least four, four, three to four, three to five tests every day. Mm. Yeah. I mean that's that's superhuman stuff right there. And I thought it was a fitting thing that like in a in a na- in a workout named after a Greek uh, mythological figure Mm -hmm. that was a woman who was as as strong and physically capable of as as all the men and that's why she i think she refused to marry until one of the guys could beat her uh Uh, i just thought it was fitting that like the top time we go to a woman wearing a vest doing alongside the men and just and she needed it you know 47 minutes ah if you do murph in that time yeah that's vested murph unpartitioned fantastic unpartitioned murph yeah Yeah, i Go home and most people listening, go home and try and do Murph unpartition with a vest and see if you break even without if, one. If you break fifty. Oh. Yeah, that's it that will go down. I think it, Carrie Pierce on Atlanta is one of the just the greatest individual performances mm-hmm. in an event at the CrossFit Games. It yeah. was incredible. Um what are some for you that maybe got some got an honorable mention? Uh the Adler Fraser total duel. Just the yeah. John back and forth. Yeah, that was fun. Um I re- actually really enjoyed hearing uh this is a minor minor one but noah getting to hear his oh, celebration yeah. on the back squat and he's like yeah baby yeah baby <laughs> i was like "Ooh, <laughs> you save you normally save that voice for uh your loved one <laughs> <laughs> the uh haley finishing with shredded hands that yes when when you could see haley finishing period yeah after what you went through on friday yeah when when she just there was a i can't remember when it was somewhere in the pull-ups and Chase was like, uh-oh, wait a second. And you couldn't quite, it wasn't, they weren't quite yeah. go, gone, but you could see it creeping out yep. the side of the uh, of the the grip. And I just fully expected her, like that's the moment you're like, you lay down. For me, if I, see, I, I, I can work through tears as long as I don't look at them. Yeah, and once then, you look at them, you're like, oh man, you're that's so like, bad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh no, that's it's three like, weeks of healing. It's like uh, his stepbrothers when they, when they, uh, <laughs> When they build the bunk beds, he's like, oh, God, there's blood <laughs> everywhere. Why did you let us do this? Uh, That's exactly how I felt. Yeah, no, that, was, uh, that was crazy. Um, I was actually, you know, I was thinking about giving the spirit of the games um, to the event itself, just the fact that it actually happened and the people behind the scenes who were able to pull it all off. Um, it was pretty cool that they were able to get that together um, and that you know, Erica Rosa believed in it and wanted them to do it and gave them the support necessary in order to do it. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that was, that was one for me. And then uh, I, would, I almost put the, uh, the Adler-Fraser battle in mm-hmm. the bike repeater I, and in the, and in the, 
across the total because it was just it was cool to see a race. Yeah, you know, yeah. not just Matt beating the pants off of everybody. This one came out. This one wasn't like it. It wasn't as fully apparent. But the conversation between Matt and and Justin out on the trail a little bit would yeah, have been yeah. a moment. But it's like that's a little bit a little bit insider in terms of like getting to know what they said, sure. just talking about like, hey, these guys are two minutes behind us. I think we're all right. And then Justin, you know, being like, hey, man, I know we've been like sticking side by side, but if we if it comes down to when we get to the finish, like I'm gonna sprint my ass off and it's <laughs> gonna be a race. And Matt's like, you do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Have fun with that. I'll be <laughs> cheering you on from the finish as you do it. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be there to clap you across yep. the finish. <laughs> so, yeah, there were some great moments. Um, let us know what you guys uh, have for your podium picks for the best moments uh, from the CrossFit Games. And, yeah, man, I, I, think, uh, I think a cool thing, too, is that we can all hang our hats on is that it's, I think it's only getting better from here. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's that's probably the another thing from I could give the spirit of the Games, too. What a wild ride the 2020 season oh. has. Man, well, look, you know, let's hope we can get, now that we know what we're dealing with, 2021 can be some bit of normal. Um, probably not going to be what we're used to, at least to begin with. But I mean, we did, we start, I mean, because this is a It's official, been a year, it, it's basically. Been, it's been yeah. a year. Yeah, because, hold on, let me, let me find it, because I want to say that. I mean, it was like a year ago where you and I were having a discussion about going to the Filthy 150 to mm-hmm. kick things off. Yeah, good. Getting to go out and visit Dorina and, and crew, crew out there. there. Yeah. Um, let me find it. Dorina and Jamie, good people. Really good people. Yeah, they were they put on so, a fantastic event too. So yeah, it was I wanna say it's a year almost to the day mm-hmm. that we were calling twenty point four at Diablo. Oh yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. That's right. Because Diablo was on Halloween. It was. It was a Halloween. Because people came dressed up. That's yeah. right. Man. Wow. Okay. Because Marston and them got in the ski suits. Oh, i never seem to see that again. Um, <laughs> Just smuggling some, ooh. smuggling some baby corn that was a <laughs> That was a poor choice. The, uh, no one is better off for having seen yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, man. The, I remember that. Yeah. We, we were calling. We the called open the tw- was a year ago. A year, a year ago. And now we're uh, November, December, January. 18 days of February. So we're like three and a half months. Yeah, three and a half months. training everybody. Yeah. So, man. All right. Well, that was it was a great way to end the, the 2020 season and uh, definitely look forward to 2021. Let us know in the comments what your guys' top picks are. I appreciate you joining us for this episode of Podium Picks. For Sean Woodland. For Sean Woodland. For Tommy Marquez, I'm Sean Woodland. <laughs> Pardon me. I have the dumb right now. Uh, <laughs> thanks for listening. Uh, take care of each other. Be better. And we will talk to you next time.